I have to give them the best best pulling in uh, in slalom, in jump or tricks or and not helping, you know, because I'm totally the opposite uh, theory that we have to help the skier. We can help the skier being more natural with them. And actually, sometimes I enjoy so much to, to, to drive and, and everything that I enjoy also spend uh, my emotion with the, the skier. So if I can see the skier that needs like a little words or something, Actually, I, I appreciate to, to talk with the skier or to give one little words that uh, they can help you. But after with the driving, for me, it's being, for me, slaloming is being more straight. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you have some skier that uh, has uh, some issue because they, they say, hey, you are, I don't know, hard or, but for me, the, my goal is being straight. <laughs> Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Wariski Podcast, or welcome to the Wariski Podcast, if this is the first episode you tune in for. My name is Matteo Luzzeri, and with this podcast, I'm basically trying to promote the sport. Um, promote the sport primarily to the vo- through the voices of the people in the sport. And uh, wow, what a person I got to interview for episode 18. This is Mario Pigozzi. He's the owner of the Catalina Ski Lake in Boca Chica in the Dominican Republic. Father of the pro skier Robert Pigozzi, who you might have heard from in episode 16. And Mario's story is particularly interesting. Um, like several guests and probably like most of listeners, he found out about the sport through his father, but really got into the sport and understood um, the level that you could get in, the various disciplines and whatnot, through an interesting work experience that Mario candidly shared with us uh, in this interview. However, one of the big reasons why I wanted to interview Mario was his driving. He's widely regarded as one of the best drivers in the world, in the world, sorry, with uh, several world championships and Pan American games and pro tournaments under his belt. And so we just talk quite a lot about driving. Um, what makes a driver good? What is the role of the driver in a tournament? Tips to improve one's driving. Uh, whether you're already a driver that drives some tournaments and you're trying to become a senior or you're just someone that is at the lake and wants to help out um, ski partners by giving them a better, fair, more straight pull. Uh, Mario really shares what he has got to understand about driving and some of the experiences he's had. Um, the ba- One bad one and not necessarily bad in terms of his driving, but an experience that shaped him into the driver that he is today and his understanding of what a driver should do. And uh, also makes a point that I found profoundly uh, humbling, I guess. What he said that basically he knows that he's done a very good job if he has been as anonymous as possible, meaning people don't know that he's there. But uh, let's not spoil her too much. I'll let you enjoy this interview. Mario is a fantastic man uh, and a very noble soul, someone that I highly respect. Uh, since I'm a little kid, I've known Mario for, for ages. And I'm very happy that I got to sit in front of the microphone with him and got to hear his story and some of his beliefs and, and skills about driving. Keep supporting the podcast. If you haven't reviewed on iTunes, on Apple Podcasts, sorry, I should keep this straight. If you haven't reviewed on Apple Podcasts, please go on there, leave a review. It really helps with charts, which is one of the main ways in which I'm trying to promote the sport through the podcast. Um, But yeah, thanks a lot for the support and um, enjoy. All right, Mario. Well, so such a blast to have you here. Uh, well, actually, you're having us here because we're in the Dominican <laughs> Republic. Uh, but thank you for joining me for the for the podcast. It's a pleasure for me spending time. 
actually with you, with your dad, with my family, because that's the, the first idea for me about water skiing. Like family time. Yeah, yeah. That is the, the most important thing that makes me move in that world. Yeah, and, and obviously, you know, your family is quite substantial, so <laughs> you do get a lot of yeah. family time and we'll get there. Um, I'm going to ask you the question that I asked to everyone, uh, the first question, so we get warmed up a little bit. Um, how'd you get into water skiing? Uh, actually, it was a funny story about my life. Uh, I never been involved uh, in that sport, uh, more than skiing like uh, with a combo behind the Zodiac or behind the little boat uh, with my father's uh, sailor boat when I was really, really young. And after I was a, a good uh, uh, snow skiing uh, level. And uh, once uh, w when I was a student in the university, I had a proposal by my father to, to move in a village, like an Italian village, a touristic village in uh, Africa and working in a water ski school and for me it was something like uh, what <laughs> <laughs> and that's a, that was the idea spending just uh, like two three weeks working there and ivory coast right yeah in the ivory coast there was a big big water ski school at a touristic level and uh, at the end i spent like uh, four years working on that <laughs> <laughs> so it started as two or three weeks and it ended up four years yeah that was for me a like a big, big dream because I was involved uh, slowly, slowly, and the passion was uh, really big. Uh, every week, more and more, I was uh, curious to to learn uh, every kind of little uh, part of the water skiing. So I was involved with uh, uh, jump, uh, slalom, tricks, uh, barefoot, uh, every kind of uh, <laughs> anything of behind discipline. the boat. Yeah, everything uh, with the boat and the water. Nice. Yeah. And we spoke a lot about, like just a few days ago, uh, off the mic, about how that experience was a bit of a life experience for you because water skiing mm -hmm. was maybe your uh, biggest duty, I should say. But mm -hmm. then you were also like doing choreography, you had to do some shows at night, you had to welcome guests, right? Yeah, it was really nice because we had all kind of uh, level of water skiing. So for me, it was great, like uh, starting from, from zero, zero, just... Uh, driving a boat with a out uh, out motor uh, on the back was uh, with a special situation imagine in plenty of uh, africa right and uh, till the moment where i had to pull some uh, professional skier because in that moment the italian team was uh, spending some uh, weeks uh, in ivory coast for the the winter season so i was uh, in contact with a uh, Kiko Buzzotta with Boo Boo and all the all the big names, <laughs> big in names it. of water skiing. So it was not just water skiing because actually it was just a part of uh, the day. In the night was uh, like uh, singing, dancing. Right. <laughs> was uh, was not an easy experience because it was uh, was really hard and working a lot of hours. But for me, water skiing was like a new, new world. And I was really curious to, to be involved with that uh, sport that for me was brand new. So coming back from Africa, I had the opportunity to find uh, in my whole town, that is Brescia in the north of Italy, actually <laughs> a friend of us, <laughs> the first uh, version of Jolly Ski. In, right. Yeah. In 93? Yeah, in 93. So the idea was spending in the summer some weeks in, in that lakes with a professional coach and water ski boat and uh, slalom and everything. And after going to that kind of village and being in charge about the water ski school. Yeah. So in those four years, obviously, you learned a lot about the sport. Did your skiing get better? Like, what, did you have time to improve your own skiing? What did you like to ski on? Actually, I was uh, doing all the discipline because uh, that was the part of uh, being in that kind of school. Mm -hmm. And every night we had like uh, one hours for uh, just for us skiing and learning and practice and everything. And after for me it was great because in Italy I could uh, work a little bit more the techniques. 
Aha. And like uh, from the beginning, uh, my favorite uh, discipline was jump. Actually. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> because uh, for me it was a little bit uh, closer to the snow skiing. Right. And for uh, that reason, I was uh, like a little bit more involved with that discipline. With jumping. Yeah. yeah it's funny because uh, I just interviewed Robert earlier today <laughs> and he said it like my favorite event was jump. You know, like, and obviously became a world, <laughs> world-class slalom skier. But uh, we, we did talk about his passion for jump, so we now know where he got it from. Yeah, for sure. And actually, you remember that we, we spent good time to, to work on the slalom course with the, the combo or jump ski to make a... That's true. We did this <laughs> the lowest, the yeah. lowest <laughs> speed challenge here in Dominican Republic. Uh, you won, hands down. <laughs> Uh, no, that was that was fun. That was fun. Yeah. So, yet those forty years, like, learned a lot about skiing. You improved as a skier. So we are what early nineties. Yeah, it was early nineties because it was the moment that I was finishing the university. Yeah. And after in ninety five, I moved to DR for uh, my own job that is architect actually. And so for that reason, I stopped totally the, the water ski world. For me, it was like a little period of my life. And I started to work here in the arts. So I moved myself and I had my, I started to have my family. And in 97, Robert born. And for me, it was great because I lived uh, actually 200 meters far away from the beach. And I say, wow, that is a country where actually we can ski all year long. Right. So in 99, I bought my own uh, ski nautique, the first one. There you go. It was a big step, uh, I think. Boat owner. Yeah. And I had the opportunity to take my exam like an uh, uh, official driver in Italy, because in that time I was uh, still involved a, l- a little bit with the Italian Federation. And uh, I start a little bit to pull uh, friends, uh, kids uh, in the bay here in the ocean in front of the, the house till 2003 when I, I understand that in Dominican Republic they, they were organizing the Pan American Games. So I was like, uh, you know, a little children in a, <laughs> a, candy, store. In a candy store and I said, wow, <laughs> that is beautiful. And I understood that it was in a river in Santo Domingo in the city. Mm-hmm. And I moved there, and when I arrived, I've seen a jump ramp, I've seen a slalom course, and actually there was Les Todd uh, and Chris Parrish and all that kind of name, and I was, wow, that is my, my place. Right. <laughs> the only one thing, uh, like three days after the tournament, everything died. Like uh, the fishermen, they start to uh, cut all the, the buoys and... The jump ramp with the current of the river was like uh, three kilometers uh, south, <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> nothing more. So I say, oh, oh, that is not the right place for uh, water skiing. And I had the opportunity to buy a, a land where I start to, to make my own dreams. Yeah. Having my own lakes. And actually all the people here in the yard, they, they were telling me, you are a crazy guy (laughs) you are spending money to to push mud and everything we spent like two months just uh, to try to catch the the land because um, it's not an easy uh, country we're finding water and all the the ground is like a rock so it was really really difficult to uh, make an own lakes and uh, after two three months uh, we can uh, find the right spot and in three more months, I had my own legs ready. Only three months? Yeah. Wow. So let me ask you this, because um, I interviewed Keith a few weeks ago, and when I asked him, he, he basically found a piece of land and said, okay, I want a lake here, but he didn't really consult with anyone and sort of build it. What was your story? Did you talk to someone that had done a lake before? No, I just uh, started to study a little bit and checking all the handmade lake uh, in Florida and everything. And you know, I'm not uh, an engineer, but I'm architect, so I was uh, in that kind of uh, situation to work with a lot of machine and everything. It was uh, something normal for my job. 
and I start to, to, to check, you know, I was sure to find a water like a two, 20, met- 20 meters deep. Yeah. And so that one was for me the, the, the best uh, option. And uh, actually the first step of the lake was a little bit shorter, was like a 550 meter, 570. And the spot was uh, a little bit short, so I start to start and turning every yeah. every single pass in slalom. And after I had the opportunity to buy more land, and I dig it uh, after five six years, and now my lake is uh, seven hundred meters, so which is perfect. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, and I remember because I think the first time my dad actually was telling me this, who, and you told him that that. The first year we came was the first year that the lake was finished. Yeah, in 2004, yeah. actually. Yeah, because the uh, Pan Am Games, they were in 2003 in the summer. And in 2004, my lake was ready for the, right. the first uh, clients. <laughs> yeah. And for me, it was uh, such an honor to have you guys. That uh, the, For me, it was uh, really a big, big dream having you in my place. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it was fine. I think it was kind of like things coming back, right? Because we came with Claudio. Yeah. You were among the very first mm-hmm. members in Brescia in the yeah. early 90s that when Claudio founded his club. So I kind of like dots connecting again, right? Um, and when I'll post this, we'll definitely post the, the picture we have in the office of the very mm-hmm. first members, you know? Yeah. Um, with dad, you and Claudio. Skiing, and skiing in, the, in the Christmas time, I still remember. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Oh, yeah, in Brescia. Yeah, yeah in, Brescia, in Brescia, not here with 25 degrees. No, no, degrees. no, it was in Brescia, actually, <laughs> with like a snowing and three degrees Celsius. <laughs> and we crazy skiing and making like a barefoot and pyramids and everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Just a man. craziness. Yeah, and so how were... So you get your lake, you know. Robert told me he was already skiing a little bit. Yeah, it was like a very a first step, uh, beginning with two combos, combos and start to learn to, to ski with one ski. It was like, uh, actually it was seven years old mm-hmm. and he was not so happy to ski. <laughs> <laughs> he was scared and everything. He was, uh, no, I don't want to train. I don't want to ski. And <laughs> Yeah, but it, step by step and with my passion, I think I could uh, uh, changing a little bit his passion. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, and he, he spoke at length about like how it took him a year to learn how to fully start with one ski, yeah, it was you know. With some coach coming, like a Claudio coming from Italy and he was telling me, hey, Mario, I'm a friend of you. You know, I, I know you since like 20 years ago make uh, your your kids make another sports yeah. <laughs> definitely water ski is not uh, his sports <laughs> right <laughs> yeah and it's funny how things turned around right yeah that is the life you 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 can never say no <laughs> yeah you can never tell no you can no, never no. tell um so you started your own lake and then yeah we did come to ski but uh what was because I remember in, already in, the, in that first year you had some skiers. Yeah, actually, the, I could find uh, little kids in the school in, in the college in in uh, Santo Domingo. So my my first idea was to buying uh, like a mini bus, uh, a van, and I was bringing kids uh, at like three o'clock p.m. coming outside from the school, bringing to the lake, skiing having like the homeworks and after I was driving back uh, uh, that was uh, during the week in the in, in the weekend they were coming with the family so we start slowly you know just with slaloming because they were like 10 12 13 years old and I could prepare like a little team of yep. water skier you know like a, with a very very low level and actually, our first experience, like a Dominican Federation, uh, was in 2006 in Mexico. That there was a Pan Am Championship yep. in Cuernavaca. Yeah, you know very well the place because the place. you have been skiing during the winter season. And we arrived like uh, with a brand brand new team of uh, water skier with Robert that was, uh, imagine, it was uh, like nine years old, yeah. <laughs> a little fat boy, <laughs> and with other three, four uh, young girls. 
And we, we had our experience in the world of uh, water skiing in the Pan Am or Latin American region. So I started to organize my own federation. I was uh, the president. And I was just uh, like a coach, president, uh, <laughs> bit of everything, chef, uh, <laughs> and in charge about everything. Bus driver, and driver, boat everything. driver. So the first tournament actually was not really good because I had like uh, two, three little girls uh, having just like the, the first pass or the first gate because the, the minimum star speed was uh, like the maximum speed that they could um, ever uh, did before. And from that experience, I think uh, Robert and, and another couple of uh, little girls, they say, OK, we really enjoy that sport and we want to train a little bit uh, harder and seriously. So when we come back, we start actually to work a little bit more. Yeah. Now, in, at what stage in this story you kind of stopped skiing? Because, you know, like I could see... Robert or young kids watching you jump, mm -hmm. say, and go, wow, you know, like, I want to do that one day. I want to do. But my understanding is that you sort of like when the lake was done, you had already sort of stopped skiing. Yeah, because uh, at the beginning, I was uh, working with a Chilean uh, driver that mm -hmm. was uh, helping me. And after one year, so I, I could ski actually every day. And I was uh, just uh, jumping because my, my back has a lot of problems since I was born. And I understood when I was like 23, 24 years old. So skiing in slaloming for me was really painful. Mm -hmm. Every set for me was staying like uh, one week uh, without moving myself because uh, it was hurt too much. So I was enjoying jumping, making a lot of uh, slalom with the, the two ski and making a little bit of tricks. And after one year, the, the, the driver from Chile left because he had some trouble uh, in his country. So for me, it was uh, really difficult for uh, skiing because I was spending so many hours uh, driving the boat and there was, Robert was still too young for driving. And I start to enjoy more the part of driving and coaching. Yeah. So it was like a period of transition. And actually, I was enjoying a lot that part of the, the sport. Yeah. Because um, I start to appreciate a lot uh, the part of being uh, a driver. Yeah. And there was, uh, during the winter season coming, people like you, like Fabrizio Mello, like uh, we had the Italian team and everything. And so they told me, why you are not uh, driving in tournament? You are a, a driver from the Italian Federation. And I say, okay, let's do it. Because uh, the same way I was traveling with my little team in the Latin American tournament, uh, season or in the Pan American so I start to be a Latin American driver ah so you were a, a, like a, an official like a driver from Italy actually from Italy yeah Candido before. took me the, the exam yeah. <laughs> and uh, Fabrizio Tito and and after I stopped to to drive in a tournament for about uh, three years yeah and I started another time here. in 2008 actually, because uh, I hosted the first uh, Latin American championship here in my lake. Yeah. And so I, I asked her to be one of the official driver, and that was my, my first experience. So in 2008, for me, was the first tournament wow. at a very high level for me, because uh, we had some great skier like uh, Totti, Pipe Miranda, um, some skier like... Uh, Javier Julio, a lot of professional skiers. So, you know, for me, yeah. it was a great experience. And how was the feedback? Because, like, I'm, I remember that winter that I wasn't part of it, but the Italian team came to train. That was before that Latin American, right? Yeah, it was in 2006. And actually. so they were, and they were telling you, dude, like, and, you know, Italian team, like, lots of good slalomers. Mm -hmm. So, and they were telling you, why don't you... Yeah, Become because actually they were they were enjoying my kind of uh, driving and everything, and, and also Bubu told me, hey, when normally I was spending two months in Italy in the summer, so they start to say me, hey, you want to drive in that tournament? I don't know in in your place or in Recetto or other place. So I start to to drive a little bit, 
Mm -hmm. And for me, it was great. I enjoy a lot that uh, experience. And yet, you, and then you had your first driving tournament here in, in 2008. In Latin America, yeah. actually, was in 2008 because I spent two years being an Italian uh, driver. Ah, so you were registered with the yeah. Italian Federation. Yeah. And after I just switched and I asked uh, the permission to switch to Latin American because uh, for me there was more opportunity to drive here in, in the Pan Am region or in Latin American region. There. Right. Yeah, because you're here pretty much yeah. the, the rest of the year. And actually it was really hard because I start and they put me every time driving like the series three of tricks or, <laughs> <laughs> you know... <laughs> But it was good for me. For me, it's not important, like the, the level of the skier or the series or everything. I was enjoying that part to, to be like a team uh, with the, the skier behind me. Yeah, yeah. And that was the reason that I start to try to improve my, my kind of uh, driving, not just in slalom, in, in, in jump or tricks and everything. Yeah. Because for me, it was really great. A great experience, a great emotion and... So I was thinking, okay, I can do something for that sport that did a lot for me, for my life. And so I want to, to do something for that sport. Yeah. Well, and you certainly did a lot, right? Like you basically created water skiing here in the DR. Yeah. And you are widely recognized as one of the best drivers in the world. Um, before we get to, because I want to get to some of your advice and your journey. Mm -hmm. uh, so you obviously sound like your first tournament as a driver here was a big tournament, like a titled event, like the Latin yeah, it's American. it's like your European Championship exactly. or Pan Am Championship. Because exactly. we had all the categories from sub 14 to senior two or senior three. Yeah. And who was driving also? Do you remember? I think it was like a Mexican driver that was... A recognized uh, driver in in uh, Latin America, and I think now is not uh, driving anymore. And perhaps another driver from uh, Chile, from Peru, I okay. think that is still driving. Okay. We were so three drivers, mm -hmm. and uh, I told you for me it was a great experience. And after the first first big big tournament for me it was the Junior Worlds actually at your place. Oh uh, yeah, in 2010. Yeah. Were you, like, I gotta ask you this, were you nervous, like, their first tournament or two? Because you, you've driven, by now you've driven a ton of great events, title, like, world championships, Pan Am Games, you know, like, pro tournaments, uh, so many. But in those first few tournaments, were you, like, nervous? No, actually, I was surprised about that, because normally when you do something for the first time, like, in a big level, you are super scared. To be yeah. judge about yeah. the, the skier, the coach, you know, the other judges and everything. And I was spending so many hours here driving people from different level, from different kind of uh, everything that for me was totally normal. And uh, I think that is the part that make me more uh, like natural on the boat. You know, mm -hmm. I feel the skier, I feel everything, I feel the motion of the, the skier, the situation, but I'm always not nervous. Yeah. And it's a part that I've seen a lot of time in, in other judges or, or drivers, that when they have to jump in the boat, they are still a little bit like, Argh. and I'm, I'm not. I'm totally yeah. in my, my world, you know. Yeah. I feel really naturally seated on the boat and, and pulling you. Yeah, yeah, no, it's interesting. and. Uh, I think the fact that you spend a lot of time in the boat is definitely helped you, right? Like you're, you're, you had your first big tournament experience, but you had hundreds and hundreds of hours in the boat driving, you know, excuse me, someone from 10 to 5 to someone who's trying to run their first pass, yeah. you know? And as you told me several times, to you, it's the same importance, right? Yeah, so, for me it's the same emotion when I can pull a kids for the first time with the combos or I can pull the first time running a slalom course or if you can running 10-25. It's a big emotion for sure, but for me it's exactly the same emotion. Yeah, yeah and I think uh, that is the, the best, best part. 
And after I became uh, the driver of the women, because uh, <laughs> oh, you know very well, because of Robert that was starting to compete, I had uh, the opportunity to drive more women and I was trying to find some some category different where Robert was not skin, but he was skin in open division since he was 12, 13 years because our federation was so, our team was so little yeah. that uh, he was competing like in sub-14 and open division. <laughs> right. <laughs> So for me, it started to be a little bit problem driving men. And I'm very famous now to be the driver of the women. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, yeah, that's true. So 2010 Junior Worlds, was that your first Worlds? Yeah. Nice. And, and the next year, I was uh, straight to Dubna. Yeah, for the Open Worlds. <laughs> yeah, and it was very, very difficult because the other driver, they, they were like, uh, put me like in a side, you know. <laughs> hey, you are a Dominican driver coming from the other part of the world. What do you want to, to drive? <laughs> Series uh, 7. You yeah. Know. <laughs> <laughs> but slowly, slowly for me, it was not important to drive Series 1 or or finals or something like that for me it was much more important to be there enjoying that time yeah can you do you want to share a story where you know wh whatever whatever driving story maybe one that makes you proud or some driving experience that you remember with like a particular yeah. emotion i can remember dubna for okay. sure Go on. <laughs> final tricks women okay <laughs> last year in the dark uh, here is cambrai right <laughs> And with uh, um, Marianne Malaken, like a uh, pin guy in the boat. Yeah. And, you know, I, I talk uh, very well, uh, I speak very well French. Yeah. And so I was trying always to speak the same language of the skier, of the release man. And I ask, uh, look, the, the spot in Dubna, you remember, was a spot really difficult. Because Challenging. we were turning around the dock house. Ah, yeah, right. And right. going straight to the, the course. And was the first year where uh, we were using, you know, the two buoys, the green buoys and red buoys for yeah. uh, slaloming. So I asked, like, uh, with the other one, you want a short side or ramp side? And I don't remember. Iris fell, like, in the four tricks. And they asked me a rewrite because I was in the, in the opposite side. And I said, no, look. You told me that side. Ooh. And we stay discussing and, you know, she was a uh, top seed right. in the final. And so she, she couldn't have the rewrite because actually the, the chief judge asked me and I say, hey, I understood that way. And I pull like uh, the other 12 in the right spot. So I don't know why you, you are telling me. And that was for me very, very hard. So we improved from that moment, you know, the little sheet where we put everything, write yeah. it. And now I'm totally, <laughs> but for me, it was really, really hard. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Because in, in, I was feeling so bad for Iris, actually. And I was feeling bad because I understand that was the right spot. So, you know. Yeah. And from that moment, I'm, when I'm in the boat, I'm really, really focused to, to try to not uh, having the, the wrong speed and everything. But uh, it's okay. Now <laughs> we are in a good, uh, good way. <laughs> yeah. Has it ever happened to you? Like uh, maybe you missed the speed, like you, you, were you had to pull someone at 58 and it was 55. Especially with the kids, you know, oh, when you kids. have hurry up from the, the chief judge or the JD marshal, they say, hey, go, 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 go. And you have a, a kids that normally start with a low speed and everything. It can make you that first pass that you are in a wrong speed because you have so many things, especially, you know, in jump that you have now a lot of different setting to put on the boat. So, yeah. you know, and we are under pressure after because we have a scheduled time. We have so many skiers and you try to do your best. But we are human. Yeah, we so are. Sometimes. And for me, it's very important to to give the, to the skier the second chance because uh, I think the skier is the, the really protagonist of the, the tournament. Yeah, yeah, it's true. We are actually a way to make it easy and everything and make it the tournament running, but the skier has, for me, the, 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 the most important part yeah, of like the so tournament. It's kind of like the skier has the stage, you're just providing the stage yeah. the and best I, way you can. I have, I have to give them 
the best best pulling in uh, in slalom in jump or tricks or yeah. and not helping you know because i'm totally the opposite uh, theory that we have to help the skier we can help the skier being more natural with them and actually sometimes i enjoy so much to 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 drive and and everything that i enjoy also spend uh, my emotion with the, the skier so yeah. if i can see the skier that needs like a little words or something actually i i appreciate to to talk with the skier or to give one little words that uh, they can help you but after with the driving for me is being for me slaloming is being more straight yeah and you know sometimes you have some skier that uh, has uh, some issue because they they say hey you are i don't know hard or but for me the, my goal is being straight yeah for everyone straight yeah. down the yeah. middle yeah, yeah. that's be- that the best is your ability that's interesting dynamic though right because um every skier is a little bit different right so some skiers like to talk to, with the driver or with the boat yeah, crew I can, I can check uh, when when the skier is like so nervous and they, he want to be focused I respect a lot just with a view you know with my eyes I can understand yeah and then so, there's some skier that I really enjoy to pull because they start to talk with you like uh, give me an example <laughs> uh, Brooke I think uh, he's the, the best uh, skier that I can pull because she start to to uh, laughing with me and uh, ask me hey did you see in that movie and I say hey come on Brooke <laughs> <We're gonna laughs> you're go you skiing <laughs> <laughs> and something like that but there's a lot of uh, skier that actually they enjoy to to talk with me yeah okay so the eerie story, maybe not the, the happiest story, right? Yeah. Um, but certainly one More for her than for me. I was uh, feeling really bad. And actually, after the Worlds, the first tournament that I pulled in France, <laughs> first year in the dock, Iris Cambrai. Oh, la, <laughs> And la. I was so... <laughs> and Christophe was in the boat with me and he said, hey, don't worry, I know that... Uh, that is the part of being uh, in the boat working for us and everything and you know yeah. we try every time to do everything for our athletes so you know yeah sometimes we can do it and sometimes not but don't worry you do your job and it's okay 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 what about a moment where you were really because again i don't know that proud is the right word particularly in your approach to driving like um if your goal is to drive as straight as you can for everyone the same way, yeah. it's tough to be, I guess, proud of your driving. But any memory that you have where, I don't know, maybe there was like a runoff or something the way you're like, wow, you know, that was a big moment, you know? Uh, for me, every every tournament for me, I'm, I'm like uh, leaving every pass, like yeah. if I'm skiing behind the boat. So I want to try to give them always the best, best pull. And for me, I don't care if it's from France, from Italy, from USA, Canada, or every other country. I try to, to give them the best pull to make, uh, to make them happy, you know. Yeah. That is the, the, the best part. When the skier finish a tournament and is happy about uh, his results. Yeah. That is not actually perhaps uh, winning, Mm-hmm. but they feel that they ski good and everything so for me that is the the best part yeah after pulling uh, finally in the world so in a particular games and everything it's it's nice because you can leave the the motion of the skier when when you win and everything but uh, how i told you also in training i have exactly the same sensation and the same feeling pulling the people yeah yeah yeah, because I can see how hard it would be to have like a memorable moment if you're dro- if you take it the same way every time, no matter the skier, no matter the tournament. Yeah. And after you know we have a bad day, like uh, you can have a bad day in uh, skiing. Yeah, that we it's a little bit harder to feel the the rhythm of the skier behind. But uh, you know how I told you before, we are human, so we have a day where you feel that everything is easy. Yeah. And some days where you feel, I don't know, perhaps if you have a boat that you are not used a lot to drive. I'm super lucky because I can drive all kind of boat yep. and I travel a lot. So for me, it's very important. I can do also 10 hours flight. I jump out and I, I like to, to go in the boat and training like yep. you. 
because I want to have the, the, the very good feeling with the boat and the skier. So I want to train with a different boat. And actually, I'm super lucky about that because yeah. I have the opportunity to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, in Italy also, when I'm coming for the holidays, I spend perhaps uh, some time driving the boat because yeah. I, I, li I like to be there and I like to train before a tournament. And like that you. we abuse it a little bit, honestly, because no, obviously no when way. you show up, like the first thing is, uh, Mario, uh, <laughs> can you, do you mind, you know? <laughs> but uh, no, yeah, it's very clear with you. Like to me, like, you know, after you drive a couple of worlds and you've driven how many? I don't know, seven? Eight? Yeah, perhaps between the junior sub 21, uh, the open, I was in Dubna, I was in uh, Chile. I was uh, in France and now in Malaysia. So four open elite worlds, worlds open yeah. worlds, then a junior. I mean, you've driven a ton of worlds. But look, not because I want to be there. The problem we have in Latin America now, we have not so many drivers. Mm. So you know how it works that the region vote for uh, their driver. All oh, right, right. So I'm always in the ballot because of that, not because I want to be there for some reason. No, no, and I perhaps sometimes it's easy because I'm there for my son, so they it's easy to organize everything, and they they want me be there. But yeah, yeah, no, and and that's that's a, that's a good point. I guess what I wanted to say is, after driving a couple of worlds, you could have gone like you know, I'm I'm the shit, like I'm a great driver, and that's that. No, whereas no, I've no never way. seen you like that. No, no, you know, no like, way. It's not my, my idea to, to be there and help in the sports. Yeah. You know, and, and I think uh, we have so many good drivers. Every driver is a good driver. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, sometimes we want to be, how I told you before, the protagonist mm -hmm. in the boat. So I'm a, I'm a driver if you ski good because I was driving good. No, no way. That's not my idea. Right. The, right. Who ski good is the skier behind the boat. So... I have to give you the best pull, but not helping you to, to reach more buoys or to have more meters, In making the, something that is not the, the, the rules, by the right. rules, you know. Right. So I have to give you the best number in jump. And for me, it's going straight in the course because uh, that one day they teach me when I, I was uh, learning like a driver. Yeah. You have to be there, you know. And now we have so many... Um, electronic system to track our our as a pass and everything. So I think we have to be there. Yeah, yeah. That that is a big big uh, trouble. At least here in Latin America, I'm, I'm working a lot with the um, in Latin America. The the lake they are always in a very nice golf course club uh, or something. So we have so many driver driver of clubs. Mm -hmm. And what I really was so surprised that uh, they start to, to say, ah, I'm a good driver because I help the skier. When I drive, he can have three more boys or he can do that, that. And actually, right. I was working with, with that. And I, I'm trying to, to teach them that you don't, you don't need to help uh, the skier. Yeah. And if you want to uh, make um, a skier, a professional skier, I think you have to give him the same pool that he's going to find in a tournament. Right. So there's no way that uh, you are coming in my place and you run four more buoys than your PB. Right. And after when you go competing or in another place, you are not able anymore to, to run that pass. Right. For me, it's the most frustrating uh, <laughs> thing for, for, for a water skier. Or if you, if you do a result... And I'm going to you after I finish the tournament and I say, hey, Matteo, congratulations. Matt, I was on the two and three in your side, so you could uh, reach the four. In your, in your mind, you say, hey, come on. So he was helping me. I was not skiing good. He was right. helping me. Right. And that I think that the, the, the worst part that uh, we can do. Yeah. yeah, I would agree. I think this sport is already so complicated enough to understand oh there's so you know? many factors and you guys when you are jumping in the water from the dock ready to start you are so nervous that you cannot imagine yeah. so because of that for me 
is giving you that kind of confidence. Yeah. You know, I, what I think, uh, why the people want the same driver, I don't know, less for jump, ah, Mario for, for slalom women, and I don't know, because when you jump in the water, you know exactly that the driver is not a, a point on your, in your mind that you are worried about. It's not a variable. Yeah, exactly. that is the idea. Yeah. You know, ha, ah, Mario is driving, so in slalom, I'm, I'm okay, he, he's gonna, I'm not worried about, oh, how is gonna drive that uh, driver, perhaps it's too hard, he's going, no. Right, right. That is the point, to give the confidence to the skier behind the boat. Yeah, no, I think, I think it's brilliant. I mean, I always say, even with athletes, And I told you, every driver, every single driver is a good driver, but we have to stop to thinking that we are a good driver because we make having more uh, buoys or more meters just because we were driving the boat. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. you guys are the, the, the very protagonist of that sport. Yeah. We are just uh, anonymous, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Making our job, giving you confidence and making by the rules. Yeah, no, and, and that's, that's exactly what I was saying. Like, you know, as a, as a skier who has to think about my own technique, equipment, uh, conditions, and all of this, the less variables I can have, the better. And it's hard in our sport. So the driver, if that, that is exactly what you said. Like, if I know that there's a good driver in the boat, then I know my that head is my mind is totally free. So exactly. I'm, I can be worried about uh, skiing if uh, it's windy, it's uh, everything you know. Yeah, exactly. But the driver is not anymore a question that you have in your mind. Exactly. And what's happened? We have I told you so many good driver, but come on, we need to be trained. Yeah. So I don't pretend if I stop to to drive here in in uh, my place or in your place in summer. I don't want to be in a in a big tournament after perhaps five six months without uh, driving, uh -huh. and that's some, you know, sometimes that is the the problem we had. Yeah. That just because we are chosen by the some rules by the International Water Ski and Wakeboard Federation, and sometimes there's a driver that they are not working during the the winter season or they are stopping to work in a, in a club or in a ski club or, and they want to go because they are voted by the region to drive in a world or in a Pan Ams or in a Euro or something like that. Yeah. I think uh, that is not a good idea. Because for you driver that you go and drive in that tournament, you feel very, very nervous because we, you were not. Yeah. You lose a little bit the, the feeling with the skier and so the results is very, very bad. Because that's what I think, um, and I want to get to this, like uh, a lot of listeners that we have are like beginning skiers, you know, they amateurs, they, like I just received an email today about the skiers, you know, like uh, Orlando, Natural Lake, seven, you know, parents with little kids, mm -hmm. bought a boat, they're pulling each other, you know. And I think one of the things people don't realize is that, yes, the driver is a judge. And their job is fairly straightforward, but it takes a lot of like motor skill. Like it's yeah. a skillful job and it requires practice, right? Yeah. So yeah, I think like, but, but you guys are not checked on your practice. Like it's not that you have to tell to, your, to the Panam region, uh, I've clocked 300 hours of boat this year, right? But because of that, we have to be like uh, honest with ourselves. Exactly. And I told you, Matteo, if tomorrow I cannot drive anymore here in my place or in other place where I go, and they ask me to, to be driving a tournament, honestly, yeah, I make a step uh, in back and I say, no, I'm not prepared about that. Right. I prefer to start to drive uh, before a little bit more in, in practice and everything, and after perhaps I, I can reach another time to, to drive tournament and, and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So with that in mind, you obviously said there's a, there's a bit of a lack of drivers here in the Latin American region. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of listeners that we might have who want to improve driving, if nothing else, so that they can give a better pool to their friends. Okay. So what are some of the recommendations you would give, right? To Just some beginner drivers. 
So I'm just uh, talk a lot with a skier, mm -hmm. talk a lot with a coach, because that is uh, very, very important. And sometimes you, you know, you ask her to, to tell to the driver you have driving the boat and hey, you, you were totally on your side or you were going with the skier in every buoys. We have to be very honest yeah. and accept the, the critics. Because I told you, I start <laughs> with a lot, a lot of critics from, from the beginning. Because, uh, so learn about talking with the skier, the coach, and other driver. Yeah. And if you have the opportunity to make video and send it to a good driver that you know that with a lot of experience and ask. Yeah. And I always try to spend a lot of time in Latin America with other drivers, young drivers or new drivers just to teach them and also in the club I talk with them yeah and I say hey come on work a lot uh, and, and don't be just uh, proud to be high, high pool uh, that guys that is making buoys at 10 20 or 41 off or no drive right. every kind of skier right because right. you learn a lot with the, also the beginners mm -hmm. that perhaps they are not they have not a good rhythm and feeling that kind of freedom with the skier behind. That is my, my part to, to, to be a driver, to feel the skier behind, you know. I go right. straight, but I feel you. Right. And I don't know, I'm, I'm always with a one eyes on the mirror, and mm -hmm. I check the skier. Yeah. That is another part that was funny, actually, in the finals in Paris, because uh, I was driving the final men and women, just because Robert was not making the finals, so they asked me to drive the finals. And I was watching the skier behind. Right. And the judge, that is a friend from France, say, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> you are crazy. <laughs> and I said, come on, I'm here in a final in the world, so I cannot uh, watch the skier. <laughs> and I say, hey, be careful if I'm straight. If I'm straight, it's okay. Let yeah, me exactly. check the skier. So, so this is actually like how you drive, like you... you Keep an eye on the on the mirror. Always, oh, always, okay. because I like to to keep an eye always uh, to my boat path. Okay. Oh, so someone you check your boat path from the every mirror. single buoy. So there's someone who's checking in the front. Mm -hmm. I'm my kind of uh, way to drive in in Sladom at least is checking every single uh, pass, every single buoy. Yeah. If I'm uh, if I'm where I supposed to be. So your eyes go, I'm guessing, from mirror yeah. to forward to mirror to yeah. forward. Yeah. And do you, like, because I've heard different things, like, so some people like to, to watch, like, to, to spot, like, say, two or three boat guys for in me front. It's very, for me, it's very, very difficult to make, a, like, a sign. There's a lot of drivers that make a sign with a duct tape yeah. in the right side just to, to maintain the line uh, with the... The buoys, for me, it's very, very difficult because I told you that is my way to, to drive. So if I have that little piece of uh, tape, okay. my eyes go goes always there. So I'm, yeah. I'm not feeling like driving naturally. Okay. And I told you just uh, spending some hours of practice with different boat. When you jump, I don't know, from a 200 to a new Nautique or to Malibu or Mastercraft, you have... The boat, they are different, so you can be a little bit on your side or on the left side and everything. So check your boat pass. Yeah. And after, I feel that. So I'm watching always the mirror and in the front. Okay. So in the front, you're seeing the next like, boat guys no, or very far very down the course? Very far away in okay. the course, in the end of the course. Yeah, because I've heard different drivers like saying, yeah. you know, I, I, I look always at say these or... We don't, we don't have to be always with the same theory or something. If you feel driving naturally on that way, do it. Yeah. And I, I don't want to change uh, the way I do drive. Yeah. So, but for me... If, the most important thing, is if you feel naturally doing what, what you are doing. Yeah. So feeling natural in yeah. the way you, your eyes yeah. are going. Obviously, checking the boat path, right? Yeah. Now, when you say video, I'm assuming end course camera would be mm -hmm. the top. But uh, do you think... Also, even filming with uh, someone in the boat and okay. film your slalom pass. 
Okay. And after you can check actually in every, how was your boat pass and you know exactly if you were driving straight or in one side or moving in every buoy, you know. So basically there. like a camera in the boat straight down the course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah, they're, they're, I never thought of that. Like you guys, when you ski, you want to film in sometimes to check your <laughs> yeah. your position and everything. For, for me, it's exactly the same. Right. So sometimes I told you when I jump in a new boat or when I jump from a master to a 200, I ask, uh, what do you think uh, to, to, to the skier or to the coach or to the... Yeah. But normally, and please, 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 don't think that you do something wrong if they call you by the judge tower and they say you hey you were it's normal guys ah okay so it's not like an offense when they tell when they tell you hey you were a little bit on your side or moving it's normal it's we feedback. are human and sometimes uh, we we cannot feel the, the the rhythm with the skier or something like that right right so it's fee- you have to take it as feedback, like the yeah. judge's tower is telling you, hey, Mario, And you know, sometimes there. the chief judge or the judges, they ask her to say to us, hey, you were not in. Yeah. It's, the, it's the only one way w- how we can learn. Right. If, they, if they say to us, oh, hey, you were perfect, perfect. And after they say, hey, that driver was totally on his side, it's not a good way to learn. No, so exactly. please. Don't don't be scared to to tell us uh, that we were making something wrong. Immediate or, feedback. Yeah. Or if we are making something good, you know, you are. Yeah. Also. Good. <laughs> that we, helps. That is the part. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No, and we know it. Like the 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 quicker the feedback, the more effective. You know. So like, I'm assuming like, don't be scared. You know, as a judge to call up and say, hey, good path, or hey. You, you're a li- you're straight, but a little bit on the right, or yeah. you know, yeah. No, it's a good point. And so, yeah, take video, um, be natural, like f- always, drive the always. way that feels natural to you. Yeah. Uh, and I'm assuming you mean that in terms of also like how you sit in the boat, how you yeah. drive, like how you grab the steering wheel, mm-hmm. like. Uh, everyone has a this kind of way. I've seen also people driving with two hands. I've seen one but uh, like uh, really hide or they moving a lot if they feel good like that and the, the skier feel good and the path is straight yeah. yeah right i think always the 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 ultimate proof is the path right like you yeah. watch the path and then yeah and the feeling with the skier and so the talking with the, with the skier every time also in jump you know uh, i try to go always close to the numbers yeah but sometimes uh, the pool uh, for jumper, you ask uh, to the to the skier, to the jumper, what they prefer to have. If they feel you are in in, in the path in a, in a, um, in the right spot, so if they prefer to be a little bit wider, also if they normally go a split and you go a little bit wider or narrow or something like that. So talk yeah. talk with the skier. Yeah, because obviously don't think about that you are the the, the boss. So you know more than them no yeah we always need to learn uh, by the by the skier yeah yeah because obviously some people might not know but the jump course is way wider than the boat yeah, so the sure. jumper gets to choose you know tells the driver hey i want to be red dead in the middle or yeah. wide split as we call it narrow mm-hmm. split so that's a discretion of the skier to say okay mario or any driver mm-hmm. i want to be here or there yeah so so you you are where they ask you to be, but they might sure. you know perhaps it's be. not exactly where they ask you because uh, I don't know sometimes also uh, the ramp is not exactly exactly in that point or the the angle is open or closer so they feel a little bit better so ask them it's yeah. okay every after every single jump ask to the jumper it's okay you feel good you want and so yeah. it's better. Well, then I got to ask you, uh, do you prefer driving slalom or jump? Your own personal pre- no, preference? No, no, no. I, I really enjoy both. Okay. But uh, for sure, I have more experience in slalom because in my place, I have no people jumping now. I have my kids actually jumping almost every day. So, but I uh, enjoy every... Also, if you ask me, are you enjoying tricks? 
I enjoy tricks also. Nice. Yeah, because uh, for me, exactly, exact, exactly the same. Yeah. yeah. It's a different feeling for sure. Mm -hmm. And perhaps uh, the more natural for me is slaloming, but jumping also for me is great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was hoping I could get a preference, but I didn't get it. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, yeah, like, and, and obviously, I guess we sort of said it without saying it a lot of practice. Yeah. A lot of practice. That is the base. Yeah. Practice, practice, practice. More hour you have, more skier. I told you, different uh, level. Don't, 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 don't be uh, like uh, pretend to, to, ah, no, I'm not to pulling that guys because it's running just, I don't know, at 43K or something like that. It's the beginner. No, it's very important yeah. because they teach you also. They pull not exactly like we are used to, to be with a professional skier. Yeah. So sometimes the pro skier makes a, a mistake and you are ready to, to, to fail it. Yeah. When you, when you drive uh, for beginners, the most of uh, the, they are not in, in a good uh, rhythm. Mm -hmm. So you learn to maintain the boat and fill in the boat also with a, a bad rhythm. Yeah. Well, so then I have to ask, um, in terms of slalom, who are some of the skiers, and I'm sure you drive them dead straight, but like who are some of the skiers that were more of a challenge to drive? Maybe because their rhythm is a bit off or, you know, like they're powerful I, skiers. I enjoy know? a lot, uh, like uh, four weeks ago, to pull uh, Aaron Larkin. Okay. <laughs> and uh, with a Mastercraft that uh, <laughs> and was challenging, but very, very challenging for me so i was uh, enjoying right. that part <laughs> nice yeah <laughs> yeah yeah not the easy very you know powerful on site sort of like cruise yeah. on off side yeah like yeah but one. also robert sometimes is challenging so I you know <laughs> for me yeah not it's the easiest. great to to have a, a good training guy <laughs> to yeah, pull. exactly yeah exactly if you need someone to trade dri driving <laughs> unexpected i think robert is a, yeah. uh, he's a good he can surprise partner. you sometimes with a, a very very hard uh, turn <laughs> exactly <laughs> so i have to be always very hurry up and ready <laughs> exactly um, all right, all right. Um, so yeah, just some sums like practice, take video, don't be afraid to drive any level of skier, yeah. um, and be comfortable and natural in the way you drive and yeah. work on that. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. And it's funny because like, you know, I, I've obviously skied behind a lot of great drivers and you spot different things, you know, like, um, how they sit in the boat, how they grab the steering wheel, where their eyes go, you yeah. know. Uh, and I think it's been very interesting in the last two or three years where um, Vincent and Tony with the Waterski mm -hmm. Broadcasting Company, they have that camera on you guys. Yeah, you know? for us was a little bit, uh, you know, <laughs> you have sign everywhere, be careful, the microphone is working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And for me, it's naturally talking with the judges and everything with the skier, but I yeah. never say something bad, so <laughs> it's <works>. okay. <laughs> but you, you, you cannot scratch your nose or something like that because all the people is watching you. Right. <laughs> it's okay. It's you never okay. know when can, Vincent is gonna switch that camera on you. <laughs> <laughs> we can maintain the aplomb also driving. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So, um, what's for 2020 for you? Any plans? Any traveling? I can tell you. I don't know because. Uh, Perhaps I'm not going to drive a lot, a lot of tournament like uh, 19 because I want to spend a little bit more time with my family, with my kids. But for sure, I will be in Europe in the summer mm -hmm. because of Robert that is going to um, uh, running all the Euro tour. Mm -hmm. And after, I don't know, because uh, in program there's uh, the Junior Worlds and I didn't apply just because it's very nice and good to give opportunity to other drivers. And I don't know, perhaps in senior worlds, because I know the place, I know the organizer, I know, I really enjoy to drive the senior, uh -huh, uh -huh. because I have no, actually, a conflict <laughs> of interest. Exactly. For once. Uh, for once. 
and I think that they they enjoy also that part to to be a team uh, with the the driver. They enjoy to talk with you and everything. So I really enjoy that. So perhaps I will be in uh, in Bordeaux for the senior world. Have you ever dreamed in a senior world? Yes. <laughs> so you've driven all the worlds, junior U21, open senior. Yeah, the senior. only one, uh, the university worlds. All oh, right, right. After every single world. There you go. <laughs> I was in Chile, actually, two years ago in the senior, last senior tour, uh, senior world. Yeah. And I was in Cesena. I, I was driving a lot. <laughs> and perhaps most of the drivers, they are not happy about that. But I told you guys. It's not me that I want to apply, and it's our region that they want to to vote me, and because yeah. of that. Yeah. So maybe a little lighter schedule for you, more yeah, family for time. Sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's understandable, you know. Yeah, it's not easy. Last year, I was traveling a lot, uh, and I was traveling too much. And yeah. sometimes it's a little bit harder, and I have a lot of clients here in my place, so I want to give them also my time. Yeah. especially in the winter season. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, well, Mario, this was a true pleasure. Anything that we didn't touch on, something you wanted to say that we no, didn't say? No, just uh, come on, guys, uh, jump in a boat and start to drive and make your test and everything. We, we need you. <laughs> yeah, we need drivers. We, yeah. need drivers. we need drivers. We need uh, judges. We need the people that really want to help that sport. Yeah. And uh, don't be scared if you have uh, kids or parents or a brother or sister that ski, because I think it's the only one way that we can be close to that sport. Because actually we are not receiving money. Yeah. We do just for fun. Yeah. And so we try to do at the best we can do it. And we need uh, a lot of people helping us uh, to maintain that sport uh, in a good level. It's a good point. Yeah. It's a good point. Well, so any young drivers or young wannabe drivers that you're listening to this get your practice do your test you know and don't be don't be scared you know i can share a story with you you obviously know sean hunter and his yeah. dad uh was like not the highest driver the one below and one winter he said okay guys like i, I want to become a senior i think it's called a senior yeah. driver yeah and so you know like we even the skiers have to be a little bit open-minded and say okay you know let's do it and so the way he did it was luckily we had a end course camera yeah. turn it on ski the 38 39 however far and then go back and watch you know um so it takes you know a bit of willingness from the skiers as well like we need to help the drivers improve as well and yeah, if you don't talking, give them a, an opportunity talking with us and and talking come on we feel that 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 and we are uh, i told you we are always connected with you so we yeah. we need to be connected with you guys if not uh, it's very difficult to give you the best uh, the best pool yeah yeah well fantastic mario thanks a lot what do you say we go Thank for some you. dinner <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Matteo. Of course, <laughs> to a give pleasure. Us that opportunity. You are doing a lot for our sports. Thank you. Thanks a lot. See you soon. Okay. Grande Mario, cazzo. Ti è piaciuto? Sì, certo. Cioè, è stato piacevole? Sì, sì, molto. Do 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 do